since we last spoke to you, Thomas, uh, nothing's really changed in terms of your relationship with Meghan in that you've had no contact whatsoever. Uh, as her father, mm. um, how do you feel about this ongoing rift? Because from the outside, it just feels so incredibly sad. Well, I'm very disappointed by it. Uh, I'm not sure why it's happening, and uh, uh, I'm waiting. I'm reaching out. I've been trying to reach out uh, for several weeks. Every, every day I try to text her. Um, I just haven't received any comment back. So, Pierce mentions that there hasn't been any contact. The fact of the matter is that there has been contact from your side, hasn't there? Um, you say that yes. you've texted her. How often do you text her? What do you say in the text messages? I just keep asking uh, to re respond back to me. Um, and I haven't got any response back. Um, <laughs> It does seem extraordinary, I, Thomas. I, I mean, have you've sent a letter. I've sent letter a letter as well. I mean, it, what seems extraordinary is you've still never met Prince Harry, right? The man who married your daughter, right? That's correct. I mean, if they're, if they're watching this, they might well be watching this because we've we promoted that you were appearing on here. What? What is? It's heading to Christmas. You always had a very loving, close relationship with your daughter. Mm. She met Prince Harry. She disappeared into the royal system. That's the last, really, you've, you've seen of her. What is your message to her and to Prince Harry, if they're watching? Well, I love you very much. You're my daughter, and I'd really like to hear from you. Um, whatever differences or problems we have, that we should be able to work them out. We're family. So please reach out to me. Have you heard from anybody? I mean, have you heard from Meghan's mother? Do you ever speak to, to her about this situation? Uh, no, no. So you've just been completely cut off, ghosted? Uh, ghosted like you, yes. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've talked about this on air, but I had a, you know, I obviously had nothing like the relationship you had with Megan, but I thought we were quite good friends and then literally never heard from her again from the moment she met Harry. And there is a little bit of a pattern, sadly, where you look back through her life of her just jettisoning people that appear to be no longer of any importance to her. I mean, is that a character trait of hers? And what do you, what do you feel about the fact that, no, you, that it's that, now turned on you? Well, that, that's really not a character trait of hers, and she's always been very polite and a very good... Uh, 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 she, she's always been very polite to everyone. She's never been rude to anyone. Um, I don't know what's really happening right now. I, I know we uh, had our differences at the beginning. There was some question about my my heart attack and so forth. But uh, uh, the unfortunate thing about my daughter and Harry is that they believe everything they read in the papers. And for the first year, they were telling me never believe those things. But now they're believing it and thinking I'm saying a lot of things that I'm not saying. Uh, and I think that might be one of the problems, but I don't have the answer yet. Around the time of the wedding, of course, in the run-up to the wedding, um, you were accused of staging paparazzi pictures, and it is assumed that that was the cause of the rift. Um, people find it extraordinary, I think, that that has continued. Have you tried to make amends to them for that? Do you feel that uh, you're... For that incident, mm -hmm. I've, 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 apo I've apologized a hundred times for that. I don't feel that uh, that's worthy of being shunned or, or ghosted. That's ridiculous. So what do you think then? If you think you've, you've apologized, that that should be accepted, why do you think that there is this persistent, ongoing rejection of your attempts to make amends? The, on, the only thing I can actually think of is that they're reading all of the things in the trades or, or, and all the tabloids and uh, that, that I, people are saying I'm saying. And the, I've only done five interviews and I, out of those interviews, hundreds of other people come and they get a story and they give a story and they say I've said these things. I haven't said so many things. What, 
but they're believing it. Thomas, and apparently that's why I'm being shunned or ghosted, I think. Thomas, what are the things that you have said, do you think, or what are the things that are claimed that you have said that you think they believe? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I read comments every day. People send them to me that uh, these are things I, I apparently said. And uh, uh, I, I can't give you a particular quote right now. It's just some people are always letting me know that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still talking. And I, uh, I, we, we talked about this last week, and it was a, a matter of uh, why does he continue to keep talking if he just shut up? Uh, they would, they would talk to me. Well, I've been quiet for six months, and uh, no one's returned anything back to me. No one said a word to me. Uh, I'm confused by it. You know, Thomas, when I, when I met Megan in London for a nice drink, and we got on very well, and I liked her very much, and she was all the qualities that I know that you know that she has, but she talked very fondly about you. You know, and very, very quickly after she met Harry and everything else, Everything seemed to change. Um, and you, you are now just being completely frozen out, which I feel really sad for you for. And I think that you've just been, you know, to be honest with you, a little bit of a rabbit trapped in headlights with the media attention, left to your own devices, not really helped in any way, um, whilst Meghan has been in the palace and has all the palace courtiers and staff and everything and press offices to help with all the media attention. You've got nothing. And I, that's what I don't understand here. But we are where we are, and you've not spoken to her in months and months and months now. She's ignoring all your messages. We're heading to Christmas. Mm -hmm. Normally, you would obviously, I would imagine, speak to her and exchange cards and so on. How do you think this is going to end? I mean, do you fear that she will possibly never talk to you again? No, I'm, I'm hopeful that soon something will be resolved and, and we'll be talking. I, 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 this can't continue forever. Uh, and uh, it, people are saying I should be quiet about this and not speak. If I don't speak, they'll be speaking. They will speak to me. That hasn't happened. Uh, I don't plan to um, be, be silent for the rest of my life. I love my daughter very much. And uh, she has to know that. And I, I would have really appreciated if she would just call me, reach out somehow to me, just send me a text, just say... You're there, and you're hearing, me and you know I'm, I'm here. You're, uh, just to be clear, uh, you're not being you're not being paid for this interview. This is something that you want to do because you just want to appeal to Megan to bring this to an end mm. because you feel like you've lost your daughter. She's pregnant. She's going to have your grandchild in a few months' time. Normally, that would be a wonderful moment for any grandfather, but for you, it must be at the moment, uh, you know, a very strange feeling where you, you must be thinking, I wonder if I'll get to see my, my grandchild at all. Well, I'm, I'm certainly hoping that uh, everything goes well and that they produce a beautiful baby and uh, I'll get to see a, a, a little, little uh, Megan or a little Harry. Um, that would be very nice and I look forward to that, that happening. Are you confident um, that that, that will, will happen will at the mine. moment? I'm hopeful. Mm. Um, I, I think it should happen. It, it's part uh, of the problem, Thomas. I think, Thomas. Uh, I, think, I, think I, I, th I think she'll make a great mom, and I think uh, uh, maybe maybe things will soften a little bit and we'll, we'll connect again. It's part of the problem, Thomas, that you don't really have... Once somebody disappears into the palace system, you can't just get hold of them like you may have done before, you know? Meghan's now the Duchess of Sussex. She's living in a palace. She's married to a prince. She, you know, is, is, will be spending Christmas with the Queen. You know, in the old days, she may have spent Christmas with you, mm -hmm. Thomas Markle. Now it's obviously a very different life. Do, do you feel that she sort of disappeared into the royal setup and that that has, in, in a way, created this huge barrier? Yes, but there there has to be a, there has to be a, a place for me. I'm her father, and uh, I will be the grandfather to her children, the children. So, um, um, all I all I can say is that uh, I'm here. She knows it, uh, and I've reached out to her, and I need her to reach back to me. 
uh, I love her very much. The, the Queen is somebody uh, that everyone has huge respect for. She, she did actually get involved with both Princess Diana and Fergie, the Duchess mm -hmm. of York, when they went through marital problems with her sons and is a very humane woman, a uh, very wise woman. And I would imagine the Queen is not unaware of this, of this rift and will probably be feeling very uncomfortable about it and mm. would wish it to end. Mm. You know, Meghan will be with the Queen on Christmas Day up at Sandringham. Um, do you have a message for the Queen? I mean, you know, speaking as a, a, a grandfather-to-be and she will obviously be great-grandmother, do you have a message for her to maybe try and help? Uh, I would appreciate anything she can do. Uh, and uh, I would think that she would want to uh, resolve family problems. Uh, all families, royal or otherwise, are the same and they should all be together, certainly around the holidays. In recent days and weeks, Thomas, there have been a slew of negative stories um, about uh, Meghan. They've been quite uncomfortable to read, actually, um, because, you know, she's pregnant, she's going through uh, a time when she should be able to relax and, uh, and enjoy what's coming up. What have they been like for you to read these stories about I don't, her I being don't, difficult? I don't really believe them. I, th I think they're gossip. I think they're gossip and I don't really believe them. Uh, Megan's always been a very polite girl and uh, uh, not, she's never been rude to anyone to my knowledge. And it must be hard uh, she for was you. Raised on, on, uh, she was raised on Hollywood stages and uh, learned to respect the crew and learned to respect everyone. And uh, I, I, I just can't see her being rude to anybody. It's not her. It, does she have a streak in her, Thomas, of, you know, I called it social climbing a little bit. I, don't, I didn't mean to be too hard on her. You know, she, she's been herself propelled into a very extraordinary world. But the, the, I just got a sense that, you know, she has unfortunately got a slight tendency that if you're no longer that important to her and she finds something a little bit more important or wants to protect something more important, she doesn't hesitate to, to cut people out. Well, I, she's always been a very controlling person and that's part of her nature, but she's never been rude. And uh, to my knowledge, she's never... I, uh, the ghosting, I don't completely understand, but uh, to, my, to my knowledge, uh, like I said, she's, she's always been in charge. Uh, that's her nature, but she's always, always been polite with it. When you see Thomas, you, you brought this girl up, you know, with, um, with her mother, obviously. You were separated, but you, you brought her up and you spent a lot of time with Megan. Um, you know, she posted very intimate, loving notes to you on her Instagram, just to, literally just months before she met Harry. So there was no doubt that right to the point she met uh, Prince Harry, she had a lot of love and affection for you. Um, you know, as a father myself, I mean, it would be utterly heartbreaking for me if any of my children just suddenly didn't talk to me again, uh, whatever the circumstances. And I know that you've tried everything, and I know you see well, this interview today as just a, 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 another attempt to try and a, appeal to her. Uh, of course, she may be watching this going, there's my dad again on TV mm -hmm. talking about all this. Mm -hmm. I can't trust him. Well, uh, she... My daughter, uh, Megan, lived with me from the age of 11, uh, all, all through uh, middle school and high school and uh, until she went off to college. Uh, we're very close. Uh, what happened, there's, what's happening, I'm not sure of. I'd love to talk to her about it. Um, uh, here again, I think it comes back to the fact that so many reporters would pick up on one of the articles I've done and write their own stories and tell lies and say things that I've said that I haven't said. Um, and if, that, if they're believing that, that's unfortunate because they've always told me not to believe anything in any of the tabloids. You, you've, where will you be on Christmas Day this year, Thomas? Christmas Day, I'll be at the border uh, giving uh, candies and toys to uh, a lot of children that will be neglected uh, around this time of year. And then I'll be with friends, most likely. I mean, there's an irony, isn't there, to the fact that you'll be helping... Other children. Ne ...neglected people at a time when I know that you feel that you've been not just neglected, but, but completely 
frozen out of Megan's life. Uh, you've never had a Christmas where she hasn't sent you a card. I mean, would you just love to just get something from her at this stage? Yes, I would appreciate a card or a phone call or uh, just some, some sign that she knows I'm here. Have you not uh, even received a Christmas card yet, and, uh, Thomas? No, I have not. It's very sad, this, Thomas. You know, I, I've defended you a lot to people um, because, you know, you, people have views about you, as you know. But I, I say, look, this guy had no preparation for the whirlwind of attention that was coming your way when Meghan met Prince Harry. Uh, I think you were thrown to the wolves to a large degree. Whenever I've talked to you, you seem a very decent, mm -hmm. normal guy to me. You know, you worked in Hollywood for years. You're used to lots of difficult situations, obviously. But it just feels such a sad thing that we've reached this point where... You should be one of the happiest people in the world. You know, your daughter, this beautiful girl, has married her prince. It's a fairy tale. She's having a baby and everything. And yet you can't really enjoy any of this because you're not part of it. I appreciate your kind words, but uh, I'm still hopeful. I, I really think there's, uh, there's always a possibility. And uh, um, I think uh, it could come around and it certainly, uh, certainly should. Uh, uh, the other thing she's been through quite a lot, uh, adjusting to what she's been doing and so forth is not an easy task, uh, but she's doing quite well and coming along with it. I, I, think, I think she'll reach out in time and I'm hoping that. Uh, she knows I'm here. I hope she does. You know, if Megan's watching this, I'm pretty sure she will be because she'll be curious, I'm sure, what you have to say. But if she is, come on, Megan. This is your dad. It's Christmas. You loved your dad. I know you did because you told me, you know, and it's just uh, I feel really sad about this and I just hope that it can it can be resolved, Thomas, and that you and Megan can be reconciled because I think the longer this goes on, the worse it gets, like any any family rift of like this and it just needs somebody somewhere, I think, around Megan, probably herself or Prince Harry, to just make a move to try and bring you back together and it would be great for everyone concerned mm -hmm. if they could do that. From your lips to God's ears, me too. I hope the same thing. Um, and I, w I wish them a Merry Christmas, and uh, I wish you guys a Merry Christmas, and I wish uh, all of the people in Great Britain a Merry Christmas, and thank you for having me. Well, we wish you a Merry Christmas, Thomas. Uh, it sounds like you're spending it doing a very good thing with these kids down on the border, and uh, best of luck with that. And, you know, stay in touch. We, we won't cut you off. Uh, I feel sorry for you. I think it's a sad situation. And I wish you all the very best uh, for the festive period. And thank you for joining us. Best wishes, Thomas. Thank you very much.